I'm going to be reading Spotted Tail by David Hesco Wombly Whedon and illustrated by Jim Yellowhawk and Pat Kinsella. Introduction Native Americans were the first people in North America. They lived and prospered here for thousands of years. Today, there are millions of American Indians living and working in the United States and Canada. Maybe your classmate or friend is Native American. Maybe you are. Meet Chief Spotted Tail, the great leader of the Sichangu Lakota people. Spotted Tail was born almost 200 years ago, and he helped lead the Lakota nation during times of war. Chief Spotted Tail was not only a great warrior, but he was one of the first American Indian leaders to argue for peace between the United States and the Native Americans. He was also a great believer in education as the best way to improve the lives of American Indians. Today, there is a university named after him on the Rosebud Indian Reservation, and his life is an inspiration to all Americans. Early Years The buffalo herd raced across the plains, kicking up clouds of dust and soil. There were hundreds of them. Run, all running at full speed away from the hunters. The sound of their hooves echoed like giants stomping across the land. Young Spotted Tail looked over his, at his father, who sat atop his favorite horse. This was the first time Spotted Tail had been allowed to join the hunters, and he wanted to make sure he didn't make any mistakes. His father waved to him, telling him to join the group of riders behind the buffalo. The best horseman rode in the middle of the herd, guiding them to the buffalo jump, which was a steep cliff where most of the animals would fall to their death. Then the tribe would gather at the bottom of the canyon to collect all the dead bison to use for food, clothing, and tools. The buffalo ran harder and harder, trying to escape from the hunters, but they didn't see the cliff right ahead. Spotted Tail watched the hunters pull back their horses and the bison ran off the cliff. It was almost as if they could fly. Spotted Tail's people would now have the food they needed for the long winter. Spotted Tail hoped he would be allowed to join in the next buffalo hunt, proudly riding next to his father and his friends. This was the world that Spotted Tail knew. He was born in 1823 on the White River in South Dakota. His parents were both Lakota Indians. The Lakotas are also sometimes called the Sioux. There are seven groups or bands of Lakotas. They are like cousins. Spotted Tail lived with a band of Lakotas known as the Sichangu. The name comes from a scary event a long time ago when a large fire raged on the prairie and the Sichangu people had to leap through the flames to escape. Most of the tribe burned their legs while running through the fire and ever since then they have been called the Sichangu or burnt thigh people. Today many Sichangu Lakota live on the Rosebud Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Spotted Tail's name in the Lakota language is Sinte Glashka. However, Spotted Tail's first name was actually Jumping Buffalo. One of the traditions of the Lakota people is that men and women are given different names throughout their lives. For example, a person can earn a new name if he or she performs a great act of bravery. A French trapper who had captured a raccoon to eat helped give Spotted Tail his name. The raccoon's tail had black rings around it, and Jumping Buffalo liked it. So the trapper gave it to him. Jumping Buffalo carried the raccoon's tail everywhere he went. Jumping Buffalo loved the tail so much that he was given the new name of Spotted Tail. In his early years, Spotted Tail grew up like other Native American boys. 
he learned how to hunt, how to play games, and how to show respect to his elders. There was no school for children in those days. Instead, Lakota boys and girls learned from their families and from older citizens in the community. The kids learned how to act and behave as, Lakota, as a Lakota person. The children learned about the important Lakota virtues. The first of these was silence, which meant that a young child should not speak to his elders unless he had something important to say. Another important character trait was generosity. Lakota children were taught to reject the love of possessions, and so all people were encouraged to give away many of their belongings to those in need. Warrior. When he was older, Spotted Tail became a warrior. The people honored him for his bravery in one of the first battles between the Lakota people and the U.S. Army. The fight started as a result of a misunderstanding over an ox that had wandered away from a wagon train owned by a settler. The wounded ox had been killed for food by High Forehead, a Lakota man. High Forehead didn't know the ox belonged to someone and he slaughtered the animal so people could eat. This angered the man who owned the ox and he demanded the Lakota repay him $25. The Sichangu leader conquering bear offered to give the man a horse or a cow to compensate for the loss of an ox. But the ox's owner wouldn't take another animal. This resulted in a stalemate between the Lakotas and the settlers. Not long after, the U.S. Army came to arrest High Forehead, but the Lakotas refused to allow the army to take him. Neither side would give in, and a fight erupted between the soldiers and the natives. The battle raged for hours as the Lakota fought the army, which used much better weapons. Spotted Tail led his group of warriors in the intense conflict. One of the American soldiers shot and killed Chief Conquering Bear but the Lakotas returned fire. They killed 29 soldiers with their bows and arrows. The battle ended when the U.S. Army retreated for, to their fort. The Lakota recognized Spotted Tail for his courage in that battle. It was the beginning of his calling as a leader of the Sichangu people. Following that battle, more fights between the Army and the Lakota erupted. In 1855, another conflict involved 600 army troops and 250 Sichangu Lakota warriors. Badly outnumbered, the Lakota warriors fought bravely against the soldiers. Spotted Tail was shot twice. He feared he had fought his last battle, but he saw a silver sliver of opportunity. With fierce fighting all around, he crawled over to the army's horses and jumped up on one. He rode away, making his escape. Although the Sichangu lost that fight, the people again recognized Spotted Tail for his bravery. After the battle, the U.S. Army issued a warning that the fighting would continue unless Spotted Tail and other Lakota leaders surrendered. Because Spotted Tail wanted the conflicts to end and his people to be safe, he surrendered to the army at Fort Laramie on October 18, 1855. He expected the army would give him the death penalty for his role in the conflict, and he was prepared to die for his people. But when he arrived at Fort Laramie, he was surprised to discover he was only being sent to military jail at Fort Leavenworth. Although the thought of jail was frightening, he was relieved that his punishment was not more severe. While imprisoned at Fort Laven Lavenworth, Spotted Tail learned to read and write English. He formed friendships with some of the American soldiers. He also learned a great deal about the Americans' technology and weapons. He decided that the American Indians should try to live in peace with the United States rather than trying to fight it.
<clears throat> the U.S. government released Spotted Tail from jail about a year later because of his peaceful behavior while confined. When he returned home, the people hailed him as a hero. The Sichangus realized he was willing to give up his life for the good of the community. Not long after his release, the people made Spotted Tail the new chief of the Sichangu Lakota Nation. As chief, he helped keep the peace for the next 10 years. The peace ended in 1864 when the U.S. Cavalry attacked a group of Cheyenne and Arapaho Indians at Sand Creek, Colorado. Chief Black Kettle led the Cheyenne and Arapaho group. At the camp, Black Kettle put up an American flag and a white flag to show that his people were peaceful and friendly. However, Colonel Chivington of the Colorado Cavalry ignored the white flag and attacked the camp killing 130 people, mostly women and children. This terrible massacre is still mourned today by the descendants of the natives murdered on that day. Many natives have demanded that the U.S. government apologize and take responsibility for the Sand Creek Massacre. Do you think that the government should apologize for terrible events that happened long ago?